Today we're going to run a quick little test in regards to the cooling fans and a lower temp thermostat. Now if you watched my previous video on a lower temp thermostat, we saw the benefits it does even without a tune, and at one point I saw where the fans kicked on and then stayed on even when the temp got all the way back down to 185, where stock it normally has like a 203 thermostat. Now at the time I didn't realize the reason that was happening is because it was in the middle of summer, it was hot as heck here in Dallas, and my AC was on. And duh, there's more than just a radiator up here to cool down. There's also the AC condenser, and when you got your AC on, well, it needs to push air through the condenser to get that heat exchanged. So the fans weren't on because of the radiator, they were on because of the AC condenser. And I actually talked to one of my subs, Artillery Buff, he actually came up with a couple ideas for me on this. And so today we're going to see if there's other ways to trick the car into turning the fans on without a tune. And whenever you talk to people about looking at lower temp thermostat, a lot of them, they'll be like, oh, you can't do it without a tune, blah, blah, blah. Well, you can. And I showed that you still see benefits even without a tune, but you could maximize those benefits with a tune. So anyway, back to today's test. It is mid-October here in Dallas, and guess what? It's supposed to be 97 degrees. I think it's like 95 or somewhere around that right now. It's probably going to be a last this hot of a day for a while, so I thought today and right now is a perfect time to do this test because what I'm going to do, warm up the car, get it nice and hot, and we're going to turn the AC on, turn it off, and then we're going to run a couple other quick tests, again, to see if we can trick the car into turning the fans on even without a tune. So with that, let me get this started up warmed up heated up i'm going to take a spin around the block to get it warmed up and then we'll come back i'll probably come back on my gopro and we're gonna try a couple things out all right just drove her around a little bit and as you can see the temps coolant temp 212 oil temp 212 and yes we have a 180 degree thermostat in here now i'm pretty sure the radiator fan is on oh yeah the fan is definitely on. I can feel the radiator fan blowing, but it's not very loud. So clearly, even though the radiator fan is on, it's not even cooling down to what the stock thermostat is right now because, well, it's hot out today. Now, watch what happens when we turn the AC on because right now the AC is off and it is on max AC. A little coolant temp just dropped down to 206. And I don't quite hear the AC fans on yet. I don't know if they're different fans. I need to look into the, the build, see what they have different fans. So I do know there's like a low speed and high speed because when I tested out the thermostat originally, the fan was loud. Like it was loud, loud when I came back from my commute from work. So that told me like all the fans were on at the highest speed they can go at. And right now they're not on, so I'm not hearing it yet. Oh, and there we go, they just kicked on. You hear that? And it kicked off pretty dang quick. So I don't know what the setting is. Looks like the coolant just dropped down to 203. But those high speed ones did not kick on for very long. The regular fans are definitely still on though. All right, I'm gonna turn off, let it cool like a few degrees, get below that 203 temp. I'm gonna turn it back on and try out a couple things. Because here's the deal. If you're on the street and you have a lower temp thermostat, turn your AC on, that's fine. That'll help the fans kick on. But if you're a drag racer, if you're out at the track, guess what? You can't do that. Why? Because if they catch you pulling up onto those, into those staging lanes or not so much as I'm saying, but if you pull up onto to the water box, onto the track itself, and your AC is on, you'll be lucky if they don't kick you out. Because with AC being on, it creates condensation and water drips from under the cars. Most people know that. It's common knowledge. In the summer, when your AC is on, water is just dripping, dripping, dripping underneath your car. Well, if you're on the track, well, that's bad because water gets on the track. Next thing you know, you have some fast eight second, seven second car come behind you and they hit that water, they lose control, spin out, slam into the wall. Not good. So you cannot run your AC at the track. So first thing we're gonna test is, I'm gonna pull the fuse for the AC clutch 
see what happens. See if I pull the fuse, will it let me turn the AC on and trick it into the fan? I don't think it will. Artillery Buff said he tried it and it did not work. I'm just gonna test that really quick and then we're gonna do a different test with the belt, which I'll show you in a little bit. All right, looks like it's cooled down a little bit. So what we're gonna do is go in the fuse box here. And looking at the chart here, looks like F12 is the AC clutch, which is right here. There is another one, uh, looks like F39, that says AC clutch, electronic power steering and vacuum pump. So since that's for multiple things, we're not gonna touch that one, but that one says just AC clutch. So F12 is the fourth one in line there and it is a 10A. And that is that one right there. So we're just gonna go ahead, pull that one out. And try not to lose it. Just gonna stick it in here for now. Okay, now let's go ahead and start the car back up. First, see if that throws any codes of any kind and see if we can get the fan to turn on. The answer should be no. Although I'm not sure about the code yet. Okay, coolant temp 185. No codes I can see yet, but we haven't even turned on the AC. And the fan is not currently on. So now let's go to climate, on, AC. First of all, it is blowing. The fan is not on. Nope, no fan. Yeah, it's blowing air, but it's not cold. So the AC clutch has definitely not engaged. Coolant temp 197. No codes, no lights. But also no fan. So clearly that doesn't work, which we already knew. Wow, fan hasn't even kicked on yet. And the coolant temp is now at 208. 213 coolant temp, 215. Oh, there we go. The fans are now on. They finally turned on at 250. Why is it not turning on until a 215? And there it goes, starts dropping. It's at 213. Let's turn climate off now. 212. And the temp is dropping. Now it's down to 208. Okay. So the simple fact is, Pulling the AC clutch fuse does nothing. So let me turn this off, let it cool down, and we're gonna try something else. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do here in just a second. All right, first gonna throw my fan on there to help cool it down quicker so we can get to the next part of the test. So next thing, what am I gonna do? Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We are going to put the AC clutch fuse back in. We're just gonna bypass the compressor. So this is a new serpentine belt. I got the part number online from people that have had the 6.4, but they had an older one where maybe the AC compressor fried or something, and instead of replacing it, they just bypassed it. So this should be the correct length for the accessories minus the AC compressor. So we're gonna swap belts really quick. And I also got this nifty tool here to help with that, which that is a separate video. And also thanks to Mac Built again on Instagram. He's the one that talked about that in a, one of his old videos or reels and that's how I know about it anyway doing a separate video on that too so we're gonna swap this belt in see what happens when we just completely bypass the AC will that trick the fans to turn on if the AC is on I don't know because can it detect if the AC is actually spinning or not that's what we're gonna find out so it just squeezes in there and take a look at this just just like that And the belt comes off. All 
All right, there is the stock belt. Throw that on the side. Here is the AC bypass belt. Hopefully, hopefully it's the right size. So let's put it right there. Man, that doesn't look like it's that much shorter, but hopefully it is. And then hopefully I don't burn myself getting this back on here. Okay. I finally just about got it routed. Man, I, I'll tell you what, this is probably one of the toughest serpentine belts I've ever had to route, but probably because I'm used to trucks where I have a lot more room than this. But I will say this thing actually kind of comes in handy because it reaches in there and helps me get the belt on there. So I found the best way I had to do it is get the belt around the tensioner and the crank first because of the angle of it. And I'll put a picture, a screenshot of the diagram so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So now everything's routed. I just got to get this belt pulled over the idler pulley here. And so for that, I'm going to stick this back in here. I'd put my gloves on because I kept burning myself. So you can see we're about right there. And there we go. Okay, hopefully everything is ribbed correctly. It appears it is. And when you get a new belt, what you want to make sure is this tensioner. You see this little U-shape here? And I'll kind of show you. So you see where it moves? You don't want it too close to either side. You want it close to the middle. So this is, in fact, the correct length belt to bypass the AC. And as you can see, there's plenty of gap between the AC clutch pulley. Hopefully you can see with the camera. And the belt here. Okay, back to the better camera because that GoPro keeps overheating on me. The AC clutch fuse is back in. We can throw that back on. Again, we got our shorter serpentine belt now that is completely bypassing the AC compressor. So anyway, let's go ahead and start it. This is kind of a test because I think the serpentine belt is on there good, but we'll sit inside my car in case anything happens. And I think the AC is currently off. It is. All right, let's see what happens. Sounds good. As you can see, coolant temp has dropped down to 172. Make sure my belt looks good. No fan on, which we wouldn't expect it to anyway, regardless, because we're at 176 temp. Let's turn on climate. We've got AC. AC is on, max AC. The blower vents are blowing because I do have my uh, dash vent blower installed. And let's see, do we have a fan? Nope, no fan yet. We're gonna let it go and see what happens. We're gonna keep the AC on. By the way, no codes are popping up, which I'm concerned about because we have the AC on and obviously the compressor has electrical going to a power going to it so fuses in the clutch will be engaged but because there's no belt it's not going to be spinning so so far doesn't seem like the car can tell uh, let's just sit here ac blowing not cold again just same as when we pull the fuse because compressor is not actually spinning 199 201 coolant temp coolant temp's going back up quick 203 coolant temp. Well, 206 coolant temp. I think it's safe to say that if the compressor is not spinning, it's not enough to tell the fans to go on. So this is the same as the fuse trick, nothing's happening. Now I do wonder if once the fan kicks on, will it stay on a little bit longer than usual? I don't know. I'm gonna wait till it kicks on again, but for the most part, yeah, looks like this is gonna be a bust. So probably we're gonna end the video after this, and then I'm gonna do a little research, see if there's any other ways I could possibly trick 
the fans into turning on without tuning the car. Oh, fans are now on. I'm guessing the coolant temp will probably say 215. Yep. So again, fan, same as before. They don't turn on until 215 degrees. All right, so go ahead and comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you know any other tricks that might bypass the fans. And again, I know tuning it, blah, blah, blah. Don't come in and comment and tell me, like, tune a car. You need to tune, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to tune it. I don't plan on it. I know that's one answer, but there are gonna be people like me that don't wanna tune it for whatever reason, whether it's you know not voiding their warranty. So that is not an option in this case right now. I do have an idea to bypass it. If I'm gonna do a little research, maybe a few parts, that'll be part two. So this is part one. So like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you at the drag strip.